Hey, welcome back TPL Nation for another draft analysis video. Uh, for this video, we have the Arizona State Impidemps coached by the one, the only, Joey P. And um, really excited to have the Impidemps in the Canto South Division, the best division. Doesn't matter what you say. So, um, um, I really love Joey's team. I know I say that like almost about every team, but uh, Joey's especially, and um, I'm sure a lot of you guys already have guesses as to why. Um, but as we look at his team here, um, number one, the OG, repping out since Gen 2, big pseudo Tyranitar. Tyranitar, obviously, bringing the sand for Joey's team. Uh, sand being a very integral part of... Uh, Joey's planning from week to week, I can only imagine. Um, I do know he likes to run Choice Band, Tyranitar, and let me tell you, this thing hits like an absolute monster truck, man. Um, I remember in our match, I brought a max defense, max HP throw, and Earthquake did like over 50%. I was like, good lord, it did like right at 50%, and I was like, oh my god, that's Banded T-Tar. And this thing absolutely smashes. So, um, very good offensive threat, um, all around decent stats, Tyranitar has been very good ever since Gen 2, never hasn't been good in my opinion, and um, I'm sure the trend will continue for this being one of Joey's best Pokemon. Uh, as we move on, <laughs> it's uh, Tank for Chop himself, so um, Garchomp unfortunately not getting access to Dragon Dance, but um, he does have Scale Shot, which could be like the bootleg Dragon Dance, uh, to speed up Garchomp. Uh, so he's in the sand, so Sandville could definitely come into play here. Um, obviously Rough Scan also being a great ability, but I feel like Sandville is going to be very annoying for people to try to deal with. Obviously, um, Garchomp's not that slow. I mean, it has 102 speed, which I feel like is very, very important because so many things that are maxed out at like base 100 speed jolly garchomp outspeeds you so i really think that's um very good for garchomp and the send veil could definitely you could definitely uh see it getting a free swords dance up because your opponent missed a move i mean obviously it's only a 0.25 chance but hey if you're trying to dodge something and you get that dodge hey that could really turn the game around for you um especially if you're like one hit away from winning um, so Garchomp's very interesting. I definitely see it uh, being a possible Choice Scarf user as well for his team, uh, just to be extremely fast. It could also run the band, absolutely, if he doesn't want to ran, run Banded T-Tar one week. Um, you could also run the uh, Rocky Helmet um, Rough Skin uh, version, of course. Um, also, I feel like Dragon Fang might not be a bad item for it, just to get that extra boost for um, your Dragon type moves like Outrage and still having, you know, items like Life Orb and Choice Band to go on your other Pokemon. So I feel like Garchomp's super good. Of course, it gets access to Stealth Rock. Um, very good Pokemon, very good coverage. I mean, as we go down and look through the list, we already see you have water coverage, you have fighting coverage and brick break, you have uh, normal type coverage with body slam and double edge, you have special moves like Draco Meteor if you want to run the special Garchomp. Hey, I've seen it before, man. <laughs> And um, Earthquake, Facade, uh, Fire Coverage, and Fire Fang, Fire Blast, uh, Home Claws, maybe for some more niche sets, Iron Head, and Iron Head and Poison Jab for the Fairies. Gotta have your Fairy Coverage. Outrage, wonderful stab move. Um, as we move down through the list, we see stuff like Roar, so uh, maybe like a defensive phaser if Joey wants to run that. Um, Stone Edge, really strong move, really, really strong, solid move whenever you can hit it. Um, and I feel like as a Dynamaxer, it, it, we automatically see the flying coverage and Aerial Ace as the usually useless moves. Um, so definitely a very powerful Pokemon. Um, and once you start getting it in uh, Hail, it's like, I mean, not Hail, once you get it in uh, Sand, so the Veil is there, you know, this Pokemon could really snowball out of control because of that um you know being able to dynamax 
and then still like if this thing was dynamaxed and it missed a and if i go for like an ice beam on something uh with something on it and it dodged i would be i would be so heated um but uh, Garchomp, a great Pokemon to, ty to uh, pair with Tyranitar, obviously. Um, no shared weaknesses to my knowledge. So, um, very good, uh, very good, um, oh yeah, Fairy, of course. Um, but very good uh, type coverages and uh, very good synergy going on there. But um, with that Fairy weakness, we also see his next Pokemon was Registeel. And I actually really love Registeel. It's the mixed defense Reggie, so 150 in both defenses with 80 HP. And I know people don't really like the whole Rest sets on Registeel, but I feel like Rest, Toxic, and Seismic Toss are probably its best set. I mean, it doesn't really... It doesn't move super slow, I feel, with the rest. Um, the rest is just to get HP back. I mean, really, you could just go ahead and slap Sleep Talk on it if you needed to. But, I mean, with Leftovers, you're already getting uh, HP back. Um, you know, it can't get its stats lowered with Clear Body. Uh, I mean, you're throwing off Seismic Tosses, Toxic. Like, this thing can wear down teams and really uh, wear down other walls that can't really break through it. So, Registeel could definitely be annoying as well as it uh, being able to really tank any fairy hits for Garchomp and Tyranitar. Um, it does kind of suck because fighting stab and fighting coverage is everywhere. So, being seeing that it shares that weakness with Tyranitar um, is definitely not the best thing in the world. But as we move through Joey's lineup, you'll definitely see that he does have certain options for that. So, as we move on into talk. Toxtricity here, um, a very good Pokemon. Um, I know he loves running the Choice Scarf uh, Boom Burst, and I feel like with Punk Rock, like what else do you need? Like, like Boom Burst, Overdrive. Uh, honestly, you don't really need that much. I think he liked running Gunk Shot. Oddly enough, does this thing not get a special Poison type move? Like, let's see, it's good it's Jab. Yeah, it gets like Sludge Bomb and Sludge Wave, so like it can capitalize on um, special poison moves as well. And uh, having like a decent uh, move pull here. But to be honest, I mean, Toxtricity, it's probably just going to click Boom Burst most of the time. Uh, very strong Pokemon. Um, you know, decent special attack, decent speed. So you throw that Choice Scarf on it, and all of a sudden it's like... You know, it's, it's pretty darn fast. And, like, Choice Scarf Boom Burst is something that early, like, in early game, it's just, in, like, mid, well, even, like, mid game, it's just a lot of offensive pressure. And um, I really like Toxtricity for those, for that, like, uh, for that special, uh, special attacking pressure that it can really put on. So definitely his premier special attacker. And um, with Overdrive, Sledge Wave, and Boom Burst, like, you're going to... Like, you're going to have a hard time finding something that can switch in reliably and not have to worry about any of this. Um, but at the same time, uh, Choice Scarf is kind of, I'm going to say prediction reliant. And just because if you know he's going to fire off Boom Burst and your opponent has a Ghost type or a Steel type, it's an easy switch in. Um, you know, Steel types pretty much switch into Toxtricity all day and can answer back with Stab Earthquakes or... Uh, not stab earthquakes, um, four times super effective earthquakes. So definitely something Toxtricity is going to have to worry about. But I think that the that the pluses uh, definitely outweigh the minuses for Toxtricity. Very good, solid Pokemon. As we move on to the next one, it's Braviary. Now, if you guys don't remember um, from last season, this thing puts in work. It it's a great Dynamax target. It has sheer force like for like wonderful like uh, it's like it's an amazing ability so um with moves like close combat so now it doesn't have to run superpower um it gets bulk up now um it does have dual wing beat uh if you want to if you're worried about like sturdies or subs of course it has brave bird but it also has good coverage in like uh, rock slide for rock coverage uh ghost coverage with shadow claw um Roost, if you maybe want to get more of like a bulk up Roost longevity set, like it's very good. Um, also, while it may not be the best move, 
you know, it does get interesting uh, utility like Tailwind and U-Turn, uh, maybe even Whirlwind if, um, if uh, we see that coming out. I really doubt it. Um, I feel like Braviary's... Braviary definitely wants to be clicking like offensive moves and um, maybe setting up on stuff with moves like bulk up. Uh, but Braviary can definitely snowball out of control. Um, AD speed isn't horrible, um, especially when you're talking about a Dynamax because uh, that 100 base uh, HP is going to double and then um, you know chances are you're not going to kill it in one hit being Dynamaxed. I mean that's very a, that's a quite a tall order to do for something that isn't four times weak or uh, if your uh, attacker is boosted. So, um, you know, seeing a air, not an air slash, <laughs> seeing like a, a Brave Bird, um, or maybe even like a uh, Max Airstream come off from this to raise its speed, all of a sudden this thing is is uh, very, very offensive. And um, obviously, with um, sheer force, it makes it a uh, premier life orb user, not getting those, um, uh, that, those life orb drops on certain moves, so it could be really powerful on Joey's team. Uh, obviously, not the best Pokemon. Like it doesn't really benefit from Sand, but it doesn't really have much going away from it in Sand. Um, so I do like Braviary, uh, and I feel like it's kind of like a like, I don't want to say dedicated Dynamaxer because we have seen him Dynamax the Tyranitar in the past, but it's definitely another option uh, if he finds himself needing that, or maybe if Tyranitar takes a big hit on Switch in that he wasn't expecting, he does have this as a backup plan. Braviaria, definitely, definitely a good solid Pokemon, and I'm interested to see how Joey uses it to his advantage. Uh, next up, we have Vileplume. Now, you wouldn't normally expect Vileplume on a sand team and you're right it's not the best for that kind of stuff but I feel like Vileplume still's gonna, still could have like uh, niche uses on Joey's team maybe just to wear down walls as well or take hits for its other Pokemon I mean when you think about Vileplume this is definitely a really good uh, fairy and fighting type switch in uh, so wonderful support Pokemon for like uh, Tyranitar and um, What's, what's its face? Gosh, I just forgot. I was just looking at it. Registeel. So, obviously a good support with Vileplume. It does share the ice weakness. Um, so, as we'll see, there is kind of like a glaring ice weakness uh, forming on his team. But I feel like he does have switch-ins like Registeel and stuff like that to kind of not worry about that. But that's definitely something he's going to have to keep in mind that, you know, so far, ice is not the... Uh, the worst option to click against his team. But as we're looking at Vileplume, we do see it has a lot of interesting moves to go for. With Aromatherapy, it can be a Cleric. With Leech Seed, it could uh, get some recovery for itself or its teammates. Um, I do know it gets Strength Zap, so being super annoying with moves like that against uh, physical attackers to wear them down. Definitely a... Uh, uh, really good defensive Pokemon as we've seen. I believe this was on Lincoln's team with the Jamaican Jolteons. So um, it's very, it's very stally. It, it can be very stally, um, but it definitely does have a quite a really uh, decent move set for a Grass type um, to really take advantage of that. Obviously, Synthesis not really its best option for healing, but you'd argue that Strength Sap is actually a better move than Synthesis. Um, but, you know, as we move down, we do see the good old, uh... Oh, it gets Corrosive Gas. That's actually a really good option. I love Corrosive Gas. You, you guys know this. Um, Charm, obviously, being a good move. Um, I don't believe Evasion Clause was added, so we do still have Double Team as a potential move for it. If it needs to suppress an ability, it's got Gastro Acid, um... You know, Grassy Glide, maybe in Terrain. Who knows? Like, it could run some really niche stuff. Um, to maybe surprise the opponent. I mean, heck, Hyper Beam. I wonder how much uh, full Hyper Beam does. I think this has like 110 special attack. Like, Hyper Beam might pick up a kill. You never know. Um, Nature Power in Sand. So I believe that gives it a rock move, I believe, if I, if I remember correctly. The Nature Power turns into a rock move. 
um, so that could be interesting coverage for it. Uh, Pollen Puff is decent in uh, certain matchups. Um, it does get some weather options. Teeter Dance is always annoying. Worry C to, to also suppress abilities. So File Plume definitely being an interesting utility Pokemon. It can be bulky. It can get out of hands. Uh, Sleep Powder, of course, also a, a good uh, utility move. Um, you know, I definitely see this Pokemon being a good defensive option, to be honest. When you look at the rest of his team, you know, it just sucks that we're starting to see that glaring ice weakness form. And uh, to build on that that ice weakness, we're actually going to move into the next uh, the next member of his team in Dracloak. Dracloak is interesting. I looked into Dracloak back in um, Season 2, and honestly, for me, there were always just better options on free agency. I don't know if he'll keep this, and I kind of doubt he will keep this, because to be honest, I think there are better options than Dracloak on free agency now. Um, if he wants something like, uh, he, like, this is adding ice weakness, it's uh, just not really that useful, because it has the same downsides. To me, it has the same downsides as Dragapult, and it doesn't have a great... Uh, physically attacking moveset, but it is made for physically physical attacking. And while Dragapult can get away with that, um, firing like its wonderful special moveset off of a 60 base special attack set, it's like it's kind of not looking so great. Um, we do see Baton Pass on it, but Baton Pass was unfortunately banned for this season, so um, except for a pivoting move. But, uh, so that's kind of hindering that move as well. I mean, I suppose it does get Dragon Dance, but, I mean, with Dracloak's abysmal, like, defensive stats, like, even with an Eviolite, this thing is not gonna live a lot of moves. Uh, so it's, like, will it really get the chance to set up? Probably not. He has just so much better options trying to set up, uh, earlier in his team with the Garchomp, with the Tyranitar, uh, with the Braviary, just... All in all, just better setup options. Um, it is interesting. It does. It is a Ghost Mon, so you know he does have access to Phantom Force if he wants to use that. Um, he does have access to Outrage if he wants to work off that base 80 attack. And um, Dracloak's not too slow. I mean, it's got 102, so it's topping out at the same speed as Garchomp. So it's decent, but I feel like for a glass cannon which is really what it is it's just not strong enough and it's just move pool it's just very abysmal for a physical set um i mean i don't i'm not even sure if this thing gets dragon darts to be honest with you um dragon darts no it doesn't even get dragon darts so really your your best uh move here is going to be outrage for the physical side and um you know outrage can hit hard but I just don't think that this Pokemon is really just going to be un unloading like ridiculous amounts of damage. It does get, uh, so we are seeing it does get Thunder Wave, Will O Wisp, so it could be more of a support set if it needed to be. But to be honest, it's not super fast, so it's kind of gonna, it's gonna find it like hard to outspeed a lot of the other um, super attack, super uh, attack and speed heavy threats. That are in the league when uh, 102 just is not super fast like there's a lot of things with 105 110 112 115 120 you know power creep is not good to pokemon with like 100 base speed or, or lower than that and um there's just not that much utility here i mean you you have double team again but this thing is not bulky it's not gonna live a lot of hits even with an eviolite um you know so this could be you know, I could be wrong, and Joey could prove me wrong, and, you know, put in some work with it. But to be honest, I think the situations that this Pokemon could be useful in are just very niche. And I think, personally, he would be better off dropping it for something else on free agency to maybe combat that ice weakness, because Dracloak is not helping. And we're going to move up to his, move on to his last member in uh, the boy, the uh, King of Bountiful Harvest himself, Calyrex. And uh, to be honest, guys, I don't know what this Mon does. I've never played with Calyrex. Uh, but to me, it's just looking like a worse Celebi. It has 80 in all stats except for 100 HP. And um, 
that's that's just bad. I'm I'm sorry. It's bad. It's not hitting hard. It's not living a lot of moves, and it's not outspeeding stuff. It's middle of the road speed. It's middle of the road in absolutely everything, and unfortunately. When we look at a lot of Pokemon like Glalie and Calyrex and stuff like that, chances are if you have like middle of the road stats with no kind of like amazing ability, as we see on Nerve here, that's usually the recipe for a bad Pokemon. Um, but I'm not saying it doesn't have its niche use. Uh, you see, I do have Aromatherapy on here on the move set, the Encore, the Double Stab, and Psychic, and Energy Ball. Um, it does have a pretty decent move pool, I'd say. Actually, just kidding, its move pool is trash. Oh my gosh. Draining Kiss. So yeah, its coverage just is not that great. Uh, it gets life dupe. <laughs> but um, I, th I think this would be better used for like a support role, maybe. Like if he just needs something to, to pop off for him. Um, we do see he has all kinds of uh, interesting moves like psychic terrain um, safeguard maybe if he wants to drop uh, block status but I think uh, honestly it's the same thing with the Dracloak I honestly think he would be better to just drop the ice weakness on his team and get something that you know can switch in pretty safely for ice moves even if it's something that's not fully evolved like grab it up Throw an Eviolite on it, and if it's a good switch in for ice, like, run it. And, you know, run, like, double stab, and... I don't know. It's just... And I'm not, I'm not saying his team's bad. Like, at all. His team's amazing. But I feel like with uh, the glaring ice weakness... Like, right now, he has five Pokemon weak to ice. Five. Five. And some of those are, are quad weak. So, like... You know, his team is really good... And, um, if you, honestly, you can only bring six Pokemon. So, honestly, if you take, like, Tyranitar to, uh, Vileplume, it's a solid team. Only three Ice Weaknesses then. But I feel like, um, one thing you don't want to be in Draft is predictable at all. Um, so I definitely would love to see him drop the Dracloak and the Calyrex, or at least one of them, and search for that Ice Resist or, um, that Ice Switch in. And uh, maybe maybe something bulky with water type would be something pretty good. But um, I think as it stands now, it's still a good team. Um, on a 1 to 10 scale, I'm probably going to rate it like a 7. And just a 7 because it is very good. It is very good still. like I, I think 7 is very respectable for my ratings. Like I said, 5 is average. 10 being the best team you've ever seen in your life. Like this team busted. Um... So I think 7 is very respectable for it. Um, Joey could definitely turn this into a monstrous team. I feel like he only needs to make one, maybe two trades. And like the dude has like a very unstoppable team. Very wonderful sand team. Uh, highly threatening for stuff like uh, rain and sun, which we'll get to later in other draft analysis videos. Um, so my final grade's a 7. Uh, shout out to Joey. He's got a great roster. The tank for Jerk for Garchomp did come through. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. I've been Ace Trainer Ryan. Peace.